Welcome to another AQA Computer Science 2016 uh, Programming Exam Solution Tutorial. We're obviously looking at the Warships code and we're on the fourth of the tutorials for this year and I want to have a look at the limited number of shells problem. So, I'm assuming you know what this exam is. Uh, I'm assuming that you've practiced lots already and this is really just sort of polishing and making sure that you've got it all right. You've been referring to the wiki book and if you've looked at my playlist you'll see I've given a link to a Google document with lots of suggestions and solutions. You've obviously had a look at that, you've probably done a mock by now. Uh, one thing to note, if you did the mock you may well have had an absolute nightmare copying and pasting uh, images into it there was a problem with it. I'm not quite sure what the problem was but the exam board have issued a new EAD just so that nobody has an absolute nightmare in the real exam uh, all centres need to use a new EAD and not the one they originally downloaded. So, we're on the fourth one uh, and the idea is that rather than having an uh, infinite number of shells to shoot at in battleships we could say OK you've only got 50 shells for instance uh, for this video I'm only going to have a look at the basic one, just where we have a fixed number of shells. But it's relatively easy to add a menu, so we could say I've got uh, an easy game with 50 shells, a tricky game with 30 shells, an absolute nightmare game with 20 shells. Uh, the other thing we could add, um, but it's you know it's only a selection statement, is a little win-lose tally, sort of, so that uh, after every game just sort of stores up whether you won or lost that game which of course only makes sense on a limited shells game uh, I haven't forgotten I will come back to the save game stuff that I promised uh, a few people so here's how we're going to do it for a start off with we're just going to have five shots uh, obviously that doesn't make sense for the game it'd be impossible but for testing it does make sense uh, everything happens in the play game procedure and all we need to do is have a decrease encounter we're going to need to declare it and then just decrement it and then we need to add a selection which currently says game one but we're going to need to say game one or there's no shots left and then we also need to change the exit criteria let's go to the code so this is our code as it stands or play game and I said we need a new variable first so let's add that in number of shots left seems to be a pretty good name for it and I'm going to uh, add an initialization of 5 to it uh, what we need to do now is add a little assignment to decrement it we could have number of shots left equals number of shots, shots left minus one, but I quite like uh, the operator. And we now need to change the selection statement. So put an else if statement in. And if we've got no shots left, if it equals zero, then we're going to tell them that. And the last thing we need to do is just add an exit criteria for the loop because currently we could have no shots left and we'll actually be allowed to have you know, minus one shots effectively. So there we have it. If I want to test this code it should work straight away. So it doesn't matter which game we do. So one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. And we can see which says no shots left so it's been tested. One thing that is a smidge annoying about this and in fact if you win a game is that the actual last board shown doesn't show the last hit. Uh, I suppose we could go back to this and just change where it says print board or even add in a print board here and here to to show it and that would be that would make it a little bit nicer. But you can see that that's worked uh, perfectly well. Um, I suppose we could add a display 
the number of shots left. Uh, I've already talked about this. We okay. We do need to pass a value in to play a game. Uh, the easiest way to keep a tally of a number of games is to to have a global, or you could of course pass a uh, a, a value in by a ref into play game. Uh, but it does need to happen outside of the play game, otherwise uh, it would get reset every time play game started. I hope you have found that useful. Uh, it's a bit of a whirlwind through it, but uh, that's certainly the, the basics of limiting the number of shots. And I will be posting the save game uh, in the very near future. If you've got any questions, want me to do anything specific, feel free to add a comment.